doesn't cost a single dime. Yeah, let's be beautiful. Yes, let's be beautiful. You are watching Shaw Arts and Entertainment. I am your host, Curtis Anderson, coming to you today from below the Broadway Theatre. It's a huge honour. I'm standing beside frontman of the Crash Test Dummies, Mr. Brad Roberts. Brad, how are you doing? Huge honour. Huge honour today. I'm a huge fan. Thank you very much. Every single mixtape I've ever made in my life contains Offspring and Crash Test Dummies. No joke. That's a true. That's a true fact, starting with that. Yeah. that those, those are high praise. Okay. And I really, we were doing your voice the whole ride in the car. And I really didn't want to be the guy that starts the interview trying to do your voice. I'm guessing like a million interviewers have done that. The Brad Roberts. Well, and not many of them can do it. No, it, it and it appears that you can no, from I, the timbre I, of your I speaking can. voice. Uh, I think I you can. can. With a couple of minutes of instruction after the interview, and we'll have you down there in no time at all. There it is. All right, we'll get this thing going. Uh, quick history Crash Test Dummies in Saskatoon. You fans, you've been here a lot, a little bit? I haven't been anywhere in a long time, yeah. actually. We took six years off since the last record so it's been a long time everywhere a lot of people that are coming to the shows have been saying to i've been waiting 15 years to see this i guess maybe they you know missed us in our heyday and thought we'd never come back but here we are something we do all the time it's got to be uh you know pretty nice though to have fans that are still asking you know where have you been where have you yeah. been that kind of thing you kept the fan base um yeah i mean uh, Yes and no. There's always going to be a bunch of hardcore Crash Test Dummy mm -hmm. fans who will, who will buy whatever I put out. And then there's going to be, you know, like the first two records where they just blew up. They were just all over the place. They were, you know, radio play, 10 million sales. Um, but the music industry just doesn't work that way anymore. People don't sell those numbers of records anymore. Um, so. It's a whole different, a whole different ball game. More touring and more T-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of that's pretty much what greases the wheels of many band these days. That's what I was going to ask you next. Uh, touring and you know just being the band now compared to like 10, 12 years ago. How different is it? It's it, well, it's very different. Um, first of all, I determine entirely where I will be going mm -hmm. and for how long. So. Typically, I don't like to go for more than about 10 days, which is pr pretty short, actually. But, you know, we used to go for two months at a time and have a week off. And with it, by the time the week's over, you've just got your laundry done and your bills paid and you're back on the road. So uh, that really got old. I, I didn't like that lifestyle. So I'm doing it in chunks of time that, that feel good. And um, I haven't done it in so long that it's novel. <laughs> so... Uh, I've had a much better time than I thought I would, frankly. All right, break down the current lineup. You're now a trio, touring across Canada? Yes, indeed. Um, myself, Ellen Reed, of course. Yeah. And um, on guitar, we have Murray Pulver, who is an amazing guitar player. Um, That's kind of cool. Back on the road with Ellen, is it like old days, or is it like a brand new chapter? Which is it? It's, um, it's a little of both. It, we're going out with a small number of people, so um, the dynamic of traveling is different, you know? Like when you're traveling with 10, 12 people, band and crew, just sitting down at a truck stop and trying to get a hamburger takes an a, a couple hours because there's so many people and big orders and et cetera, et cetera. So the, uh, the smaller dy dynamic is really nice. And um, yeah, I think everybody in their personal lives have really moved on. Um, that's much different. Murray was a kid when he first started playing with us and now he's got kids. Um, Ellen's getting married. I am married, got married. And, um, and I didn't even ask for a prenup. <laughs> Actually, I think she's probably gonna be worth more than me <laughs> soon. Uh, how cool was it? This is one of my last questions. When Weird Al spoofed you guys, like, I mean, is that, kind of the bar where you know you've made it, you've, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're culturally relevant when Weird Al spoofs you? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's funny because sometimes interviewers will say, will say to me, Brad, you must have been really pissed when you got, you know, Weird Al yeah. made fun of you. And I'm like, are you kidding? This is a career milestone. Nice. And not only did he choose that song 
to cover, he chose it as his first single, <laughs> and it was also our first single. So um, that was really good, and he's just a great guy, really, really easygoing guy. Um, approaches all the bands and politely at, inquires, you know, can I, do you mind if I do this? Because really, he, he could do it if he wanted to without asking for perm permission mm -hmm. from anyone as long as he pays them the, you know, the proper royalties. That people have this idea that you have to get permission to record a song. You don't. I could record Led Zeppelin 2 from track 1 to the end, but I wouldn't see any of the writing royalties that those guys would see. I would see royalties from selling the record, though. You'd probably have a heck of a time doing it, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't even come close. Couldn't, I wouldn't go there. That's yeah. sacred territory. Yeah. Uh, you'd be hard for you to do that. Like, you know. Yeah. yeah. I know. Well, that's one of the things I thought Immigrant my... song can... No, no. no. Okay. Uh, and, and it's funny you should say that because I at first looked for people to sing the songs that I was writing because I, I sang so low and I just thought it was ridiculous. I grew up on Screamers. Everybody from <laughs> Jagger and Alice Cooper and Steve Tyler to all those... I yeah. mean, I didn't listen to them, but all those hair metal bands in the 80s, just before we came out, they were all Screamers. I didn't think anybody would take my voice seriously. And then I couldn't find anybody who would sing it the way I heard it. So finally I reluctantly gave in and started singing. And it turned out to be an asset. Yeah, so. worked out pretty good for you. You're in Saskatoon tonight, reconnecting with old fans, getting some new fans. What do people need to know about the Crash Test Dummies here in 2010? Uh, what do the people need to know about Crash Test Dummies in 2010? Good my question. Rap. Well, so you uh, get to say whatever you want. Yeah. Um, the record is excellent, the new record, it's called Ooh La La, and um, if you're coming to the show tonight, you're going to want to sample the merchandise because we have not only some beautiful t-shirts, but we have panties as well. Panties. A not often uh, purchasable item at the merchandise booths of yeah. today's bands. And that may have been the first time the word panties has been said on Shaw Arts and Entertainment. Thank you for that. <laughs> Front man of the Crash Test Dummies here in Saskatoon tonight. Thank you so much, sir. It was a huge honor. Thank you. Enough about the look in your eyes. Enough about the sun and the sky. We're